Hello and welcome to uh, this webinar today, the top five steps to startup marketing success, where what I'm going to be taking you through are some of the areas that we have learned are really the places that as a startup founder or someone working within a startup, you really need to be thinking about, first of all, uh, as you begin to plan out how you go to market and how you're going to successfully market your business. So firstly, I just want to introduce myself. I am going to be leading you through this session today. My name is Jodie Collins and I'm a digital marketer and strategic planner and I've been working in advertising uh, across creative agencies, media agencies and also media owners and publishers all across the Asia Pacific region for more than 20 years. I'm also the founder of Read Digital, which is a digital consulting company that works with different businesses across the Asia Pacific region to help develop their marketing strategies and workforce capability. So we teach people how to do all aspects of digital marketing. And we work with a whole range of different companies. Uh, we, over the last few years, worked with agencies, big name agencies across creative and media, as well as several brands that you would no doubt recognize and some of them that are uh, new and startups, which you may not be familiar with. So we work across the entire ecosystem. We do both business to consumer marketing and B2B marketing as well. And what we've done is, you know, really because we're working with all of these different brands and seeing the challenges they face and how they overcome them, we wanted to distill that and put that into, uh, into this webinar. Just some of the key things that we've learned you really need to focus on when you're starting out your business uh, because we know that there's so much information out there and you kind of need to sift through what is the most important stuff you need to be focusing on. So today, that's what we're doing. We're looking at the top five marketing steps you need to take to ensure success for your startup. And as an entrepreneur, I do understand just how important this business idea is to you. And I want to set you up with the processes and tools to give you the greatest chances of success. What we're going to be covering today is just some of the key things you need to be thinking about uh, so that you've got a place to start. Because we know that you know, there's so much information on the internet. And if you don't come from a marketing background, it can be really overwhelming. Uh, so what are the top five steps? Well, let's go into the first one. Firstly, it's to really understand the foundations of marketing. So if you don't come from a marketing background, there are a few key things that you really need to understand. First of all, and you know, if you went to university and, under, and undertook any type of marketing course, then you would have heard about this, the four P's of marketing. There are a few extra P's now that, uh, that people are starting to use, but really these are the basics. These are the foundations of what you need to understand uh, include, is, is included in marketing. Oftentimes when people think about marketing, they go straight to promotion. They think about advertising and how you are communicating a message to your potential target audience across a range of different channels. But there are a whole host of other things that you need to be thinking about in relation to really understanding your audience and understanding where it fits in the ecosystem. This stuff is really important to figure out before you start looking at how you're gonna promote your business. So firstly, your product. This is where you really need to think about how your product fits into the ecosystem. And so when I say product, that could mean uh, both something that you are creating and selling, a physical product, or it could be a service. So your service could still be a product, whether that's uh, a type of software or a consulting offering. So you really need to think about where your product fits into, uh, into the whole ecosystem. You know, who, who is it appealing to? What problem is it solving? Who are your competitors? And, do, and get a deep understanding of all of that. Then there's price. So your pricing and where it sits against your competitors, uh, the uh, potential other ways in which your audience can solve whatever problem it is that you are trying to solve. And that might not be a direct competitor. It might be something that's even outside of your category, but a way in which your consumer can, can solve their problem. Uh, you need to think about that in terms of in really figuring out where your price point sits. Then there's place. So place is really about the distribution of your product. How are people accessing it? How are they, uh, how are they buying it? How are they getting access to the, the service that you might be offering or the, or the product that you're selling? Is that online? Is it offline? Is it both? How are you driving people from one to the other? Uh, so that's really important because you need to get your product or service into the hands of your customers in order for them to, to be buying it. So you need to think about your distribution strategy. And then finally, promotion. So this is everything that you're doing to actually get your message in front of consumers, your potential audience. 
So there's a lot of work that needs to be done underneath each of those different areas. We're not going to go into that in, in a, a lot of detail at all today uh, because we just won't have time, but we're going to give you an understanding of the overall ecosystem so you know the areas that you can start thinking about first. Now, when we talk about digital marketing specifically, these are the key things that you need to be thinking about. It touches all the way from your brand experience. So, and with, if we're talking about digital specifically, your digital brand experience. How are people finding you online? What messaging are they seeing? You know, is it through your website, through, uh, through an app, through uh, your social media channels? So you need to think about what are the ways in which someone is going to interact with you come into contact with you, maybe it's through a partner. If you are selling a product, maybe you're going through an e-commerce partner and the digital brand experience is gonna be whatever your audience sees when they're actually uh, in that e-commerce environment. Then we have a number of ways in which we can get our product or service known. So search marketing, social media marketing, content marketing. These are really the key areas that you need to start with and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more later. Then once you've got all of those things in place, then you can start thinking about things like paid media, uh, where you're then starting to build your audience outside of what you're, what you're doing through your organic channels. And we'll explain that a little bit further as well. Everything you do should be underpinned by an overall strategy as well. Your integrated marketing strategy is what you will need to put together, which helps you understand well, what are we doing in our digital channels, but also what are we doing in offline as well? What are the ways in which we're actually connecting with people in real life? And then we should be thinking about measurement and analytics. What analytics do we have in place? For instance, website analytics to be thinking about uh, what are the ways in which consumers are actually uh, finding out about us? What are they responding to on the website? We want to manage all of that too because that's going to give us insight about what people are interested in and how they're interacting with us. Data management, which can, can touch on your analytics, but also just how you're collecting information about your customers. What, what are you collecting? Is it email addresses? And if so, then that leads into your email marketing automation. So there are a lot of different areas that you need to think about. There are some that you can prioritize first of all, and I'll explain that further. One framework that we use for thinking about the marketing ecosystem is by looking at what assets we own and directly influence versus what we pay versus what we pay for versus what we can earn. So what do I mean by that? Well, our owned channels are those that we have direct control over. So that's going to be things like our website or apps. Paid is then when we're paying for attention. Are we using a partner to be able to do paid advertising, for instance? And earned is... Uh, probably the most difficult in terms of actually getting people to hopefully share information about us because either our product or service is, is great and people want to be talking about us or they've seen some content that we've produced that they really like and they want to share that. So this is what we need to think about. How are we, how are we uh, touching and planning all of these different areas? Let's dig into the paid, owned and earned ecosystem a little further. So we need to be thinking about our owned first of all. So we put owned media here. Actually, there's a, you know, this is really anything to do with our owned channels. What do we have direct influence and control over? So the most obvious things are your website, your mobile site. They should be one and the same now anyway. Um, your blog. So are you creating content where you're writing about uh, things that are related to your product or service? And your social media channels. Now your social media channels, while they may seem like they are owned to you, and yes, you have direct control, actually this is where it touches into the earned media space as well. Because you wanna be using your social media channels not just for broadcast, that is putting out messages, but actually building a community and, and having a two-way conversation. So your, then we look at uh, your paid media. So these are the things where we can pay for advertising or to reach uh, our consumer. Pay-per-click, which is uh, another name for search engine marketing, SEM. Display ads, retargeting. So this is where we look to retarget people who may have already visited our website or interacted with some advertising we've shared. Paid influencers, uh, paid content promotion through a media partner or social media ads. Uh, so these are the things where, you know, it's, it's easier for us to just buy space and buy attention but it's gonna have a slightly different impact on how a consumer is gonna be responding to that. Uh, 
then we look at earned media. So this is, you know, are we getting people to share or repost anything that we are producing? Are we getting people to write reviews about what we do? Again, because our product or service is just so good, uh, hopefully, <laughs> that it's so good that they're writing about it. Um, and then if they're writing neg negative things about it, then what are we doing about that? So this is where we need to think about this whole ecosystem and how these three areas work together. So for instance, getting our content on our website right is going to help drive our search engine optimization, which will mean that we rank more highly on our search engines uh, and also mean that it's easier for people to find us. Then when we start doing search engine marketing, then we're gonna have a higher chance of actually uh, getting the terms that we want for a more cost-effective price. So all of this ecosystem is actually related. So we wanna think about planning all of these out together. Uh, now, that's just a really quick introduction on that. The next thing is how we get a deep understanding of the audience. So this is really, really key. And really, before we start any of that planning for the, the areas that I was just talking about in the last point, we really need to understand who our audience is. Now, how do we do that? We, we should have a hypothesis about who we think our target audience is. And this is where we wanna think about how are they spending their time? Who are they? What is their pain point? You know, what are the things that they really have as an issue uh, that we need to be solving for? Uh, you know, what, what's happening in their lives? What are, their, what are their pain points at work, outside of work? How can we potentially help them improve their lives? And so what we want to do is then create these things called personas for each of the different key audience segments. This is just an example and doesn't go into any real detail here, but it gives you a top line understanding of what are the types of things that we might start thinking about. This is an example that we did for a, uh, an e-commerce startup that we worked with, which was focusing on just selling flowers through an online e-commerce offering. And what we started to explore were, you know, what were the problems these people had? Who are they? Um, and from here, we developed out a far more detailed understanding of all of these different key segments before then really honing in on one or two key segments that we wanted to focus on in our marketing activity. So this actually should be a really detailed process where you're spending time with your potential audience segments and interviewing people and talking to people and getting out of the office and actually asking people questions. And the best place to start with that is just look around your network and see who you know so that you can start uh, asking people what they really are experiencing in their lives so that you can understand their pains and how you can help them. Next is creating a brand. So this is really important now because uh, this is the way that we become memorable. So people are absolutely bombarded with messages now, and you would know this as well, uh, that it's more important than ever before to be memorable because we need to cut through. And what a brand does, it actually helps simplify choices in a busy world. So a brand is this idea of an intangible asset. So it's something that helps us remember. Uh, and, and there are a number of different things that go to making up a brand. Now, why is it important to build a brand? It gives your company a unique personality and distinguishes you from other similar products in your market. And it consists of more than just a logo. It also involves the values and promises of your brand. So this is where you really need to be thinking about what does my brand stand for? Uh, what are the things that, uh, you know, not, not only what pain points we're looking to solve, but, you know, what, why do we exist? What, what are we really hoping to achieve? And so we need to be thinking about all of this as we start to create our brand because it's going to really impact then how we continue to move forward as we create our brand, pro brand proposition and the positioning. So branding helps to generate recognition. It's the brand is the face of the company and it's how your consumers will perceive your company. Branding adds business value. So an established brand increases the company's leverage in the industry, which in turn also increases the business value of the company. So oftentimes then this is actually something that is really key in building out your business value. When you really show that you're making a difference uh, to your audience and then if there's recognition of trust and, uh, and real value in what you're delivering, then that's going to really add, add business value. Branding helps to bring new customers as well, because then if there is a positive impression of your company, there's familiarity and trust, uh, and people are potentially talking about your brand as well, then that's really going to help with word of mouth. 
Uh, also, it's not just about what a brand does externally, but also internally. Uh, it can help with greater empl employee pride and satisfaction if you have a really clear understanding of what the vision is for your brand, what it stands for, and difference that it's making in the world, then that can really make, it, uh, make a big difference, particularly in a startup. And it can create trust within the marketplace. Having a proper brand Proper branding helps portray the company as professional and instills a sense of trust. And this increases the likelihood of consumer interaction. So a brand is more than just brand identity. It's a promise. What does your brand stand for? What is it promising uh, it can deliver? So that you understand your value proposition and what it is that you're saying that you can actually deliver to your potential customers. Uh, your brand personality and story is really important. You know, depending on the category that you're in, you're going to have different tones for your brand. If you're a, a cybersecurity startup, then trust is going to be really important for you versus if you're a fun uh, luxury or e-commerce uh, e fashion brand uh, where you're going to want to have a different sense of, of tone and personality. So not only is it important to understand then, you know, what your vision, your mission, your purpose is for your brand, but really what the personality is and the story that you're trying to tell with it. Your brand positioning is then where it sits in the market versus your competitors. And really the position that you are trying to own in someone's, um, in someone's memories. And your brand identity is all of those different things that go up to make uh, your uh, your brand memorable, the logo, the colors, the tagline, uh, different imagery that you're using, uh, the way in which you present your marketing materials, all of that is going to contribute to your brand identity. The art of marketing is the art of brand building. And if you are not a brand, you are a commodity. I love this because I think it's really important more than ever to actually create something that is memorable because we have so, so much to cut through now. So next point is now you have a deep understanding of your consumer, your audience, you have thought about what your brand is and you know, you've already started to think about uh, or get an understanding for the marketing ecosystem. Then it's going to be really cri critical to think about what your marketing strategy is. Now, what is a strategy? So sim really simplistically, you can, uh, describe a strategy using these key questions. Where are we now? So what's the status of where we are now? Are we a new brand? Are we an existing brand? Do we have existing customers? Are we starting out from scratch? Then where do we want to get to? What's our vision and our mission overall for the business? But also where do we want to get to from a business objective or marketing objective perspective? How many customers do we want? Uh, what type of impact are we looking to make in the world? And then the third thing that we need to think about is then how are we going to get there? So it's really important to have a clear idea on where we want to, where we want to get to and a deep understanding of who our audience is and where our brand is positioned is where we're looking to position and market because that is going to define how we get there. This is going to directly impact the tactics we choose, the channels that we choose, the ways in which we go to market. So it's important to be thinking about all of this up front and not just rush into doing tactical Facebook advertising, which is one of the things we do a lot of stuff. We see a lot of startups do. So a strategy is really a clear statement of intent. This is what we want to do. And this is how we intend to do it. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to be fixed to doing that for all time. It just means that you have a stake in the sand. Now, you know, this is where we want to start. And once you start getting feedback and inputs from your analytics, for instance, you see what people are interacting with, then you can continue to refine it. But you should have a clear idea of where you're going to and look at how you can change your tactics in order to get there. At some stage, you may want to refine where you want to get to, but only after you start getting some inputs in. So what are the key elements you need to think about? So really, these are the five key areas that you need to think about in order to develop out your marketing strategy. So the first thing is really being clear on your objectives, identifying your business objectives, your marketing or your communications objectives, and then clarify what the specific task is that you're actually trying to achieve. So your business objectives are going to be things like sales, revenue, number of units sold, uh, number of clients serviced. Your marketing objectives are going to be things like how you're building your brand, where you want to be positioned in market, what you're trying to do from an awareness consideration perspective. And your communications objectives are going to be things like, uh, you know, where you're actually, uh, what type of message that you're actually trying to drive in market, whether that's landing, uh, 
what are the what are the things that you want people to think about in regards to your brand your consumer insights then are what do we know about our customers or our non-customers so we would have already started to explore that when developing an understanding of our audience so in our uh, second point earlier brand positioning what is our brand's key purpose and message so again that's something that we should have been thinking about in our third area where we started thinking about our, developing out our brand now a planning tactics what are the tactics we'll use to achieve our goal so once we know how or know where we want to get to we have a deep understanding of our consumer and we understand you know where our brand sits in the market then we can start thinking about what are the right channels what are the approaches how are we actually going to be um, reaching our audience so what are the tactics we'll use to to go out and reach our audience then looking at measurement and kpis what are our key performance indicators to tell us we've succeeded or not? And how are we measuring these? Now, these should directly link back to your overall objectives, which I was explaining earlier. So one of the things we really need to think about uh, is what is our key problem? Is it awareness? So people don't know about us yet. Is it consideration? People know about us, but they're not driving through to purchase. So that could mean a range of different things. Uh, competition is high. Uh, maybe we're not at the right price point. We're not reaching the right audience. So there are a whole host of things there. Purchase. Is it that people just, you know, people just aren't buying us? Uh, so again, then that might be related to a few different areas. And then loyalty. Once someone has purchased us, you know, how are we actually maintaining that relationship with someone? What are the things we need to be doing to maintain that relationship and how do we continue to build it? So as we think about our overall strategy, we really need to hone in on what is the key area that is our problem. And for most startups, your key problem to begin with is absolutely going to be awareness. So you need to be driving awareness with people so that they can even find out about you in the first place before they can start thinking about whether you are the right thing to solve their problem. So the fifth thing we need to think about is how to start building your audience using organic channels. So why do we say this? We say start with organic because there are a whole host of different activities that we can actually undertake, which are not going to cost you uh, a great deal of money. And that's where you want to start out as a startup. So the first thing that we always think about is search marketing. Uh, there are two components to this. There is the, the organic search, which is your search engine optimization, how you get found organically through the search engines. And then there's your paid search. Before you even start thinking about your paid search, you need to get your organic search right. Now, this is also directly linked back to your brand positioning online. Uh, what content do you have on your website? So you need to have a website uh, that has information about what it is you're offering, uh, where people can buy it, uh, how, they, how they can work with you, and explain what it is, um, why, why you effectively, why you versus a, a competitor or versus something maybe there's not even a competitor in your space yet maybe it's a new problem that you still need to explain so that's where we really need to think about you know what is it that you are solving what's your problem that you're solving and then we start thinking about what are the keywords that we need to identify that someone might be searching for when they're thinking about your problem so as i said there are two parts to this so your search engine marketing is your paid search ads so this is those listings that appear on the top of the search engine results page now we only want to start doing that once we've really got our content on our, on our website up and running properly uh, before we start launching into the paid search component then next thing we want to be thinking about is our social media marketing what are the right platforms that our audience are using where we really need to make sure we have a presence now you've got a whole host of different choices depending on where you are in the world uh, and there are going to be different um, dominant social media channels which you can use depending on whether you're targeting consumers or b2b uh, business to business or whether you are based in uh, a market in north asia versus uh, somewhere in europe so there are a whole host of different things that you need to be thinking about here again how do you choose what are the right platforms you need to have a deep understanding of your consumer and where they're spending time. The other thing that I see often happen with startups is they try to do everything all at once. And what I would definitely recommend is focus on a couple of key channels. First of all, get them right, start getting feedback, just start getting content into market and seeing what people are responding to. 
and use that as a way to then build out additional channels later on. So what you're looking for, first of all, is you just need to have a presence. You must have a presence online because everyone is going to go online when they hear about you to see whether you are legitimate or not. So you've got to be in some key social channels depending on your audience. And then you build once you've started developing um, or once you've started getting feedback. Now, what is really important as well is content marketing because your content marketing actually is going to help you fill your social media channels. So you can't just do social media activity um, you know, without actually having a story behind it. So your content marketing is all about managing, delivering content through paid, own and earned media to attract and retain customers as well as position your, ban your brand as a credible expert in whatever product or service cate category it is that you're offering. So here are just some samples of you know, the types of things that we put on some of our social media channels. You can see it's directly related to what we're doing, but it's not just talking about our products or our services. It's actually providing information which is useful and helpful to people uh, who are interested in the type of thing that, that we have on offer. There are a lot of brands who do this really well, uh, you know, and this is used both, both across business to business and business to consumer. So your content marketing needs to be something that you need to think about up front. Uh, now, what is content? Content is anything that adds value to your reader's life. It can add value by making them smarter, making them laugh, making them do their job better, uh, rush to their child or share their video and make a contribution to charity. So there are a whole host of different things. So I, I really like this uh, because it's important to think about content it can mean a lot of different things. It can mean a lot of different types as well. We've got video, we've got text, we've got audio and podcasts, uh, white papers, downloads. There are a whole host of different things. And again, this is where you really need to think about well, what is the right strategy? What is it that we're trying to achieve? So there are a whole host of things that you need to be thinking about before you're just diving into this as well. Now, why is content marketing important? Well, it's because shareworthy content is a really good way of creating awareness for your brand. So if you create something that actually does become shareworthy, you get people to share that content for you, then that's going to be a really good way of building out uh, your brand awareness without it costing anything extra for you to use against paid media. Uh, also, your content marketing is going to be really useful in your email marketing and email content fuels opens and click through rates. Uh, your social media marketing absolutely requires content marketing. So it, you need this content to feed your social media marketing engine. Uh, content can create trust, authority, and establish relationships with other brands and businesses as well uh, as your consumers. And user-generated content can help to drive purchase by providing social proof to potential buyers. This is reviews, testimonials. You know, how are you... How are you uh, helping to generate positive reviews both in e-commerce environments or on review sites and as well as how are you using them in your own social media channels and on your website? Now, when we start planning out content marketing, uh, this is one of the key things that we think about with our clients is we think about what are the passion points of the consumer? So again, it goes back to we've got to have a deep understanding of our audience so we know what drives them. What are their pain points? What are they trying to achieve? You know, what are their goals? What are their dreams? And then we look at what's the right place for our brand to actually be connecting with this consumer? Where does it actually in, inter, intercept? So, you know, what we want to find is this, is this beautiful fertile ground, ground between what our brand has expertise in, where it's relevant for us to be talking and where our consumer whether that is a consumer or someone in the business to business audience as well, you know, what is it that they're interested in uh, and find where it's relevant for us to be having a conversation. So, you know, really we want to be thinking about what are those things that are going to be interesting and the, way, the ways in which we look at it are, um, are you providing something that is interesting and entertaining? So it could be even making people laugh, uh, could be, um, you know, uh, just something that is lighthearted in order to drive awareness, or it could be providing the utility. How are you helping them? So again, having a really deep understanding of your consumer's pain points is going to help you identify what are the things you should be creating related to your brand or your brand's product or service offering that are going to help them. So there are these three questions that we, uh, that we think about as we begin to plan out a content marketing approach. What topics can my company or brand talk about in depth and with authority? Uh, secondly, how can the above topics translate into content people actually want to read or watch? 
So it can't be that we're just providing something that maybe there's already a lot of that exists on the internet, um, you know, presented in the same way. How are we actually being interesting, entertaining, useful? You know, are we presenting this content in a different way that helps people really get to the point of what it is you're trying to say? And then once I've figured out this overlap, how do I produce the content? Where should that content go? So this is types and formats, you know, are we producing video? Is a podcast the right thing to do? Are we producing white papers? Uh, there are a whole host of different formats. And also we recommend that there are different formats that are going to work across the different stages of your marketing funnel. Whether you're trying to drive awareness, consideration, purchase or loyalty, there will be some different things that you can do uh, across those different parts of the funnel. And then of course, well, where should that content go? So what channels should it sit in? What's the best way to get it out there? So now you know the top five areas you need to focus on when launching your startup. It's understand the foundations of marketing, get a deep understanding of your audience, create your brand, develop your marketing strategy and start building your audience using organic channels. Then, you know, with so much to do, where do you start? Because to be honest, I've just done a really, really quick overview of something that actually usually takes months for us to work through with a client as well. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into figuring out all of those different areas. So with so much to do, where do you start? Well, one thing I do say is you don't need to do everything. So just because another company has a social media profile on Facebook doesn't mean that you have to have this too. You need to work out what's right for you. And that's where the strategy component comes into it. Really understanding your customer and figuring out what is the right thing for you to be doing to create the most impact that you want. So you need to know what types of activity to focus on first. So this is why we have created what we call the Startup Growth Project. And this is actually a, uh, this is a course where we help startups on the journey from taking your business idea to market. So I have been working in marketing, media and advertising in digital for 20 years across Asia Pacific, across Asia Pacific with both big global brands and new startups. And so what we've then done is then, uh, oh, and, and as well, I'm a business founder. So I've been through this process myself as well. We haven't just done it for lots of clients, we've done it for my business too. So I understand what you need to get started and also the right way to plan out and implement a successful marketing approach to get your business started as successfully as you can, because we know that you are limited on time, limited on budget, and you want to try and do this um, as much as possible on your own if you can. So in this course, what I've done is distill the best of what I've learned from the big brands in terms of branding and marketing excellence and looked at how we can apply that to startups. I've also taken what I know as an entrepreneur and from working with startups about how to begin and successfully go to market. So who is this course for? This course has been designed for you if you're a startup founder, particularly from a non-marketing background. Uh, so you know, if you haven't had any exposure really to marketing in the past, you're um, going to want some guidance around what are the things that you, you should be focusing on. A startup founder who's already started a business, but you need to understand marketing. So again, you already have something that you, you know, you started to work on, but you're not quite getting the traction that you want. And so you want to figure out what are the key areas you need to be focusing on. You have some basic knowledge of digital, but you're not sure how it all connects together. And again, this is where it's really important to understand the full ecosystem and how you develop a strategy and how you prioritize your different, um, your different actions and the process that you should go through for that as well. And this course is also for people who are thinking about becoming entrepreneurs and want to get everything organized before they quit their jobs. <laughs> so this is a really nice way to actually plan out what are all of those things that you need to be working on while you still have some cash flow coming in and you want to start building out your brand and really get a head start on um, on what your business idea is about and how you are going to go to market successfully. So I know the challenges you're facing because, uh, you know, you come from a non-marketing background and need guidance. So we work with a lot of people uh, and, you know, these are really smart people from different backgrounds and, you know, maybe they're lawyers or developers or engineers. Uh, sometimes they're traditional marketers and they want to better understand digital marketing. So, um, you know, we work with a lot of people who've, who've uh, had those challenges and help them overcome it. Uh, you also don't want to have to outsource your marketing activity and want to know how to do it yourself. So we completely get that too, because as a startup, you don't want to be spending all of your money on just, you know, hiring agencies that might be expensive to do this activity. You want to try and do it as much as possible you can um, yourself. 
And, you know, we know that look, there is a lot of information out there on the internet. And one of the biggest, uh, you know, challenges that I know a lot of startups face is, you know, there's so much out there and I can probably teach myself, but I just don't know where to focus. And I just wish I had someone who has been doing this stuff for a long time who can just tell me what to do, what the process is. So you also might have a limited budget, so you don't want to pay someone else for this. So you don't want someone else to have to do the work. You want to do the work. And your startup is your dream and you want to give it the best possible chance of success. And I know this because I've been through this process myself as well. You know, you've been thinking about something, it's your, it's your dream, it's your baby, and you want to make sure that you're getting it out there in the best possible way that you can. So where will you get to at the end of this course? So you'll go from having a business idea, and so it might still only be at idea stage, early in the setup stage, or you're already actively in market, but you need to get your marketing sorted out. Uh, to being in market with your minimum viable product and have built your online presence and started bringing customers. So what we will do is actually show you the steps that you need to go through and we'll actually practically step through that process with you. So you can just get your brand out there, start testing it, start getting some feedback, set up your online presence and, uh, and start to build out your business. So, this, we have eight weeks of modules, which will be aimed at giving you the knowledge to be able to plan and implement your brand building, marketing, business development processes. So we will actually guide you through the process of what you need to go through to get this up and running. We're also going to have activities and handouts for you to actually implement what we're talking about. So this course is really focused on both the learning and the doing. If you do the work, you'll be ready to get some version of your offering and market to test. So that's actually the plan is that, you know, we will show you the steps you need to go through to practically get this into market. Um, it's actually going to be a really important part of the process that you're ready to do the work. That's how you're going to get the most benefit from this is by actually following the activities and the steps and the worksheets and the handouts that we give you in order to go to market. So how does the course work? Every week, you need to watch the videos, then download the checklists and activities and undertake the work outlined in the homework. So this is gonna be really critical to moving you towards your goal. We'll also have office hours each week to give you an opportunity to ask questions about how what you're learning applies to your business. So look out for the information on the call times and the course information on the website. Now, you will also be able to access those office hours after, uh, after they've been held as well. So uh, what we'll do is we will take questions from people, you know, we'll collect your questions and we'll record answers to those and, and post them online too. So it's really important to go through the process of doing the work because then this, is, this course is absolutely for people who are serious about actually getting something out there. Uh, and, you know, while we say it's an eight-week course, if it takes a little bit longer for you to do that, then that's also fine because you're going to have access to the, the videos and the handouts on your own terms and you'll be able to practice the work as you go and then continue to ask questions as you move through it. So the Startup Growth Project it is all about transforming your startup idea into business ready to go to market through marketing guidance designed especially for startups and small businesses. So this e-learning course, what we go through is actually there are four key areas that we go through over the, over the eight weeks. Um, first of all is the planning. So how do you create and define your startup idea? Even if you have an existing idea that is in market, what we're going to go through is a process of re reviewing your value proposition um, and showing you the ways in which you really need to clearly define what your value proposition is. Uh, defining your target audience. So again, if you already have this, this is going to be about refining it and really figuring out whether you know what you have in mind is what you want to continue to build out and test then we'll go through a process of helping you set up creating your brand setting up your marketing foundations creating your pitch document and building your team and finding freelancers so we're going to have a whole host of different activities and work that is related to how you actually uh, set all of this up um, starting to think about setting up your social media accounts, the process that you need, what do you need to do that? You know, what images do you need? What copy? How do you do copywriting? Where do you find freelancers to help you with all of that? So we'll go through all of that. Then the operations. Once you've got things up and running, how are you then getting a feedback loop so that you can actually test out your minimum viable product and start getting feedback on that? Um, setting up your analytics. So we'll step you through how you do that. Uh, setting up your, your business system so that you actually have, you know, business development process, uh, and a sales process. And then finally growth. So once you've got all these things set up, how do you then start to think about adding in things like paid media so that you're actually building a presence online, finding an audience through, through paid media 
and growing that customer base and then how you continue to operationalize your content marketing and social media management going forward. So at the end of this eight weeks, you will be in a really good place to be in market with a product. Now, so the eight weeks of learning to kickstart your startup, this is how we go through it. These are the key areas that we're going to be covering off from business idea and marketing planning to setting up your own channels, marketing and your growth marketing. Uh, so what are the things you're doing from an organic perspective? How are you building that into your feedback loops? Then looking at what you need to do for setting up a team or freelancers. So maybe you won't be ready to hire a team, but you might be looking at getting some support from freelancers. And we definitely recommend that across some very specific areas such as branding and also um, if you're not an engineer, then some of the development work as well. The fantastic thing is there are so many good tools and we'll take you through the ones that we use and the, the, the different options that, that we work with our clients on uh, helping them go to market. Uh, setting up your measurement. What are the right things to measure and what are the tools that you should be using to measure those things? Building your audience and then getting your systems in place because what you want to do is try and automate as much as possible so that you can continue to look at how, you growing, uh, how you're growing your business. So if you're interested in hearing more about the Startup Growth Project, contact us at this uh, URL here. What we'll do is we'll include this in a link um, in the... Uh, in the webinar as well. So um, look for that link or email us on inquiries at re.digital. And we would be really happy to give you some further information about this. And then we look forward to potentially working with you. Let's get started. And good luck. You know, there are a whole host of things that you need to be thinking about. Um, this is a really exciting time. And you know, I remember when I first started my business, I was so, so excited about it. And it has been an amazing journey. And I'm really excited for you. So um, let's get started.